Hi, Anna. How are you, Jean? Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? We are fine. fine. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so good to see both of you. Hi. Hi, Marcia. Thank you, Erich. My ups, the light is not good. Hi. Ups. Hello, everyone. Hello. <clears throat> Artin, Artin uh, was almost in my presentation in Stockholm, but he was sick in the hotel in Stockholm at the same time. Oh, it was awful, but I'm so happy that I will be able to hear you now. Very good. I specifically made the presentation for you. <laughs> <laughs> you are wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> almost true. <laughs> <laughs> We are still waiting, and then we will introduce one, each other, whoever doesn't know each other. <laughs> okay. Ah, Lyubica. Hi, Netru Emote. We don't hear you for some reason. Connecting to audio, Anna. Maso, maso. Ciao, ciao. Oh, kako je lepo videti vas. Zdravstvite. Oh, Zenja, hi. I'm so glad to hear you and see you. Yes, yes. Oh, <clears throat> good. Uh, is Milica coming, Marcia? Yes, he, he just called me and then she had some problems to connect, but she is uh -huh. fixing that, so she is coming very soon. Okay, dog, we are waiting for her. Beth uh, said that she has, she has some doctor dissertation defense and can come, and uh, Robert may come or not, it depends. <laughs> he is in California at the moment, so I, with the family, so I think he will, he will yeah. try to join, but it's quite early for him as well. Oh, that's true, but uh, okay, eight o'clock in the morning in California. And Artin, you are in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, still. <laughs> <laughs> Lubica <laughs> is, is in Belgrade. Masha is in Stockholm, right? <clears throat> Very good. Yeah. Okay, we are still waiting. There were some other people interested on the uh, Facebook, but um, sometimes they are not there. See, here is Milica. Terrific. Yeah. Yeah, here in Belgrade, a lot hi. of things are happening. Hi, <laughs> it's the hi. end of the oh, Milica, hi. Milica. <laughs> what did you say, Lubica? I said that a lot of things are happening here because it is end of the year and all projects must, must be finished. <laughs> yes, it's crowded completely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It has to be finalized. Okay, let's start. And uh, you, first of all, I want to say thank you for all the people who came to the presentation and interested in that. Uh, and uh, first, let's introduce each other, who is who, because not everybody knows everybody. And so I will just go in the uh, round that's on my screen, but you then first one who I choose uh, should choose the next one. So first next to me is Eugene. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hello, my name is Eugene Matusok. Um, I'm originally from Soviet Union, the country that doesn't exist. And now I'm in Philadelphia and I teach at the University of Delaware. I'm interested in dialogic and democratic uh, education. Thank you. What can I do for you? Oh, and my my actually watch is talking as well. It wants to introduce itself. It's Apple Watch and so on and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> so
So choose somebody else besides your apple. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, okay, next to me is Artin. Okay, my name is Artin. Uh, Artin Gönju. Uh, just so you know, I am an Armenian from Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, in some ways, I'm connected to, I think, all of you, actually. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but we won't say more about that. <clears throat> um, I live in Chicago. Uh, I retired early some years ago. And uh, I am a play researcher and an early childhood educator. So I am dying to know what Anna has to say about her mother's work. I, I don't know if you remember Lubika, but we met in one of the meetings long time yes. ago. Good to yes. see you again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And I see Masa next. Oh, yes, my name is Masha uh, Avramovic, and I'm coming from Yugoslavia, the country that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> but I, live, I lived in Belgrade, where I finished my uh, education on pedagogy at the Faculty of Philosophy. So I'm a pedagogue, and I was employed in the chair at the faculty where Anna's mother, which Anna's mother founded actually uh, around 50 years ago. And at the moment I'm in uh, Stockholm. Uh, I do my PhD thesis in children's participation in early childhood education. And uh, I try to create something that I call life for pedagogy and research. And Anna's mother is one of my theoretical resources. And I was reading uh, your work about uh, Eugene and Artin. So it's nice to see you like this. Mm -hmm. So, and next to me is Lubica. <laughs> yes. So nice to see Lubica again. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> uh, well, Lubica Belyansky Ristic. <clears throat> I lived in, uh, I'm, I'm born in Italy, lived in Pula in Croatia, and for now, for a long time in Belgrade. Uh, I was very active in, uh, in work with uh, children, uh, uh, psychologists, pedagogues, teachers, and artists, and other different uh, people who wanted to to work with children in the field, children and uh, young people and other artists together in the field of uh, uh, drama uh, uh, and uh, creativity processes uh, uh, and also new theatrical tendencies. Um, uh, now I'm working on uh, on the archive of all of these uh, projects. And I hope that something will be, uh, <clears throat> that it will be possible to do something with all these uh, materials. Because uh, with all these changes, a lot of things uh, uh, are now not in, 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 in good condition and, uh, and disappear. Well, <laughs> I I was uh, uh, I was uh, very happy and proud because I you know and I I work with uh, Sanda Marianovic, Anna's mother, and now also with with Anna for a long time, uh, beginning with metaphor and metaphoric workshops, and now about. Uh, uh, Sanda. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> so, introduce. Uh, so, who do you choose now? <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> you. Yeah, I, I can't see because I am on mobile. Oh, I, mobile. I, I can't see uh, who is present. I will okay. just give my turn to my uh, to Milica first, and then I'll introduce. Oh, yeah, you. Milica is here. Yeah, Milica. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Milica Sekulovic from, from the Institute for Philosophy and Social Theory in Belgrade. Um, I'm a PhD student 
uh, dealing with the industrial schools in Yugoslavia from 1945 to 1965, dealing with the history of pedagogical ideas in broader sense in this region. And previously I was Masha student uh, during my bachelor studies, which was my great pleasure and honor. So thank you very much for the opportunity to join um, uh, to this symposium today. Okay, thank you everyone. And I'm Anna Marianovic Shane, uh, also from a Yugoslavia, a country that doesn't exist anymore, like Milica, Ljubica, and Masha. And uh, for a long time now, I live in Philadelphia and have worked here in different uh, uh, um, universities uh, and uh, other institutions, like the City of Philadelphia. Uh, Office of Mental Health, Mental Retardation for a while. Um, and I'm the daughter of Sanda Marjanovic, a title that if I stayed in Belgrade would be my dominant title, probably <laughs> the rest of my professional career, because uh, uh, Sanda was uh, really a unique person for the early childhood education in Yugoslavia. But unfortunately, uh, be because of many things, and specifically that this is a small country and mm -hmm. Uh, uses a language which is uh, usually not known to anybody else, but uh, yeah, from to the people of that country, uh, she stayed largely unknown to the larger uh, world uh, professional uh, sphere <coughs> in early childhood uh, pedagogy and education. So um, it's it's really uh, the project, uh, uh, one of my long-term projects and probably coming very soon into a little bit stronger uh, yeah, uh, work is uh, uh, a project to translate uh, some of her most important uh, writings and uh, write a monograph uh, probably together with Masha, or maybe some other people will join us too, that would incorporate some of these uh, translations and, and other things and uh, our takes on what did it mean then and what does it mean for now and whether it, can, uh, whether it has any future uh, or potential, uh, some of her ideas. So um, we will present today, the three of us, Milica, Masha, and I, uh, so outlines of, uh, of an arc of Sanda's ideas and the background from which she comes. And we will start first with the uh, uh, historical background that Milica and Masha would uh, give us, uh, so, so to speak, as a canvas for Sanda's work. And then I'll present the uh, my uh, take on what Sanders' work mean, meant, what was her main, what I think were her main ideas and how she tried to uh, yeah, uh, navigate them. And then Masha will uh, give her own views of uh, connections that Sanda had with different philosophies and other intellectual traditions. So please, Milica, Masha, start your presentation. <laughs> Okay, so I will share the screen. Oh, something happened just to... There it is, yeah. No, something is... Um, it's not full screen. I will just manage to... I need to open it up on another, in another place. Okay. So that it can go as a full screen. kind of updates, but we will skip that. Okay. Fine. <laughs> do, do you see? Because something is, I don't know why he wants uh, update. But do, start right here from the presentation, from the shared picture, start the full screen right there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I will. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will not, um, I will not cover all of, all of this uh, at the beginning, but for me and uh, being at Swedish University, what was the very important question uh, is 
why uh, revitalizing uh, Sanda's idea at the, ideas at the moment? And what kind of um, project, pedagogical project, uh, she developed in the context of former Yugoslavia and how that project can be relevant today? So uh, in my work, I try to, to answer to this question, why revitalizing Sanda's ideas and what they meant then and what they can mean today and what kind of metapedagogy she developed or what kind of philosophy of pedagogy she developed. But that will be uh, later. Um, and I would, I would start now with, uh, with uh, the question, why revitalizing her ideas? And refer to uh, a Serbian philosopher who said that speaking about caring the work of significant individuals doesn't only mean to republish their manuscripts. Above all, it means continuing their work on addressing problems that they pose and considering solutions that they offered. In short, it means continuity with one's own tradition. And we could agree that Sandus Marjanovic's work was very significant at that time in Yugoslavia. She was the founder of the uh, subdiscipline of preschool pedagogy. But even more important uh, is that she posed problems that uh, we believe, and when I say we, uh, I'm sure us who are dealing with her legacy, we believe that she opened up some problems in early childhood education uh, that are uh, quite relevant today, maybe even more than in her times. And at the same time, when I was doing um, interviews with uh, preschool teachers, and especially with the preschool who is the head of um, who is the head of National Association of Preschool Teachers, uh, I came to the conclusion that uh, Sanda's ideas, 50 years after she created them, became uh, vibrant in these times. And uh, as a teacher said, if you go throughout Serbia, even to the smallest places and preschools there, teachers will know about Sanda's ideas of preschool as a place of shared life living, partnership between children and adults, about an open upbringing and preschool education open toward community. But still, this teacher said, we have never made these ideas fully alive in practice. And that is really a pity. These ideas are still relevant even more today. So how are they relevant? Uh, and why they are relevant, I think will be uh, will be answered throughout this presentation. Uh, and what are the key questions that that Sanda posed? Uh, and what are the key themes that she covered in her uh, in her uh, scope of work? The first question is the question about preschool pedagogy as a scientific discipline. And she uh, created a stance of a pedagogy as a discipline as both critical and creative science. And that was significantly new because uh, at that time, critical pedagogy was a discourse quite dominant in, in, many, uh, in many places, in many universities. But she and added this creative dimension of the science. And I, I find that very, very interesting. Uh, then she posed the problem of preschool upbringing and education, and she developed a conception of creative education, or in Serbian, stvaralačko vaspitanje. So stvaralačko is a little bit wider concept than creativity, but that's, that's another story. Uh, another problem that she posed was um, the, the, the problem of the theory of preschool upbringing and, and education. And she developed what I consider as a paradigm of open system of education. And she considered preschool as a place of shared life living. And that shared life living between children and adults was seen as a, as a source of education. And the fourth theme is uh, her theory of child's creativity and play. And in her work, uh, she, uh, she found groundings and inspiration in Yugoslavian neo-Marxist philosophy. And later on, I will say a few words about that. And also she used many sources as her take on pedagogy was transdisciplinary. 
So she used sources from anthropology, history, pedagogy, psychology, sociology, literature, and art. And I think this transdisciplinarity when it comes to unique science of education as pedagogies was a, was a huge contribution of her, both in the local context, but I, I also think wider. And now if we have Milica and if she feels free to, to as a historian of pedagogy to bring us shortly through the uh, context, uh, if historical context of her ideas. So in this chapter of the presentation, our work, Masha and I uh, tried to uh, work on um, contextualizing Santa's ideas within a uh, wider context of developing um, uh, historic uh, uh, pedagogical ideas in this region. When I say this region, I mean Serbia from 19th century to um, um, a Yugoslav context to 1990s um, in the broader sense. We tried to trace back um, her roots um, uh, and the relying on um, uh, pedagogical thinkers who uh, were uh, who worked on developing uh, pedagogy as a uh, university discipline here um, in Serbia, and um, from uh, 19th century, um, um, the pedagogy in Serbia was developed as a continent, continental in continental in the line with the continental tradition, especially in the work uh, of. Uh, your, um, voice of package. Uh, so um, uh, pedagogy here it was constituted as an integral science of education, focusing on the holistic development of a human being and individual personality. <clears throat> So uh, this tradition is was um, breaked after the World War II uh, because of the ideological premises. Okay, so uh, so we Milica will will have this take on, on uh, history of pedagogy and where uh, Marianovich uh, is uh, in the line of, of history. But I would uh, now uh, jump on. Um, on the influence of this neo-Yugoslav uh, Marxist pedagogy uh, and neo-Marxist ideas of, of, the of the philosophical movement in, in ex-Yugoslavia. And that movement was called Praxis. And uh, they, were they were focusing on humanist uh, aspect of Marx uh, work. And for them, the task of philosophy was not only to develop philosophical ideas uh, based on Marx and other authors, but rather to create a ground for uh, social and political revolution. So uh, they developed practically oriented critical theory. And they said that critical theory shouldn't only criticize the praxis and practice, but rather uh, use, uh, rather be used as a ground for social intervention. And in their reading of Marx, and Marxist, neo-Marxist philosophy, they focused on ontology and ethics. Uh, ontology uh, in terms of human beings as being creative beings, and ethics as open ethics, uh, considering human action and praxis as a genuine form of human action as ethical. Ethical by intentions and ethical by the consequences of praxis. Uh, they also uh, combined uh, philosophical thinking with social actions, and they didn't want only to criticize social structures, but rather to recognize creative potentials, uh, both of institutions and social structures, and potentials for self-realization in the current context, and potentials for its transformation. So in this kind of scope, in this frame of, of philosophy, uh, Marjanovic was developing her approach to socialist pedagogy of the time. And I will shortly say uh, something about the method of praxis philosophy that she also used in developing of uh, a pedagogical method. And I need to say here that uh, it is very interesting that she never considered herself 
as a member of the group, and she was not official member of the Praxis group. But uh, according to, to Anna, uh, she had vivid contacts uh, with many of, of members of Praxis group and vivid discussions. And when I traced uh, Praxis as a philosophy and compared with this uh, meta project of pedagogy of, of Sanda's work, there is a lot of commonalities. And uh, the method of the Praxis philosophy was based on, on several uh, points. Uh, one is that uh, we should focus on concrete reality in its totality and wholeness. Uh, we should consider dynamic historicity of the reality. So to look back in time and see how some phenomena were generated. Uh, the third point is self-determination, but self-determination not only of individuals, but also on social structures, processes and phenomena. Uh, then, uh, praxis philosophy was also a uh, focus on tracing contradictions and uh, interplay between forces which are closing the systems and opening the systems. So, creative forces and closing forces in each. And uh, the fifth ground was uh, transcendence. Uh, understood as qualitative change and movement toward potentiality. So uh, transcendence as ongoing qualitative creation uh, that they consider as revolution. And I put R in the bracket because uh, for a revolution as according to uh, Petrovich, which is one of the members of the group, uh, revolution is actually creative evolution. Uh, so that is uh, something that I also see in, in Sanda's pedagogical project uh, how this opening and closes forces of education should be considered and what kind of pedagogical revolution uh, uh, we should undertake. And, and also what is characteristic for praxis, uh, I already mentioned it, but I want to point out again, because we can see it in Sanda's project, that is this interplay between philosophy, so philosophical concepts, social science as empirical science, and social action as political action. And if we look at, at uh, Sanda's uh, pedagogical project, we can see its philosophical part. We can see action research that she advocates for as a part of social science, as pedagogy is. But we also see her social engagement and social action in, in pedagogy. She was collaborating with practitioners, she was part of uh, of uh, developing policy in education, new curriculum at a time, and so on and so on. And to finish with this, what is the common point between this philosophy as an overall framework and Sanda's project? I would claim it is meta philosophy. So this approach could be seen in her pedagogical approach. Uh, and we can also see that she considers both pedagogy as a discipline and education as praxis. And praxis in a sense that it is ontological, that it is creative, voluntary, and self-determinate. And, uh, and this, uh, and it's also interesting that, uh, that Sandra developed pedagogy in this scheme as a, as a part of social pedagogy, but in the official structures, she is thinker in the margins. So it's very interesting when we saw a booklet about social pedagogy, uh, they considered uh, uh, Marianovich's work as critical mainly, and as something that was not fully part of mainstream thinking at the time. So, that is, uh, and definitely Anna and I, we are talking about exploring more in detail these connections between practice philosophy and, and Marianovic. Uh, and uh, later on, I will speak about uh, this meta theory of, uh, of Sanders pedagogy. But before that, I will ask Milica, uh, uh, how do you feel? Can you, can you say a little bit more about history of pedagogy? Just uh, unmute yourself. Okay. Um, so, um, as Masha said, um, 
So when working with Masha, um, we um, came up with these statements regarding the uh, Sanda's position. Uh, uh, can I say position or something like that in the um, <clears throat> uh, context of history of pedagogy ideas in uh, this region? So we came up with this some kind of a statement that uh, Marjanovic was developing her project at the point of complex intersection between continental and empirical in broader, broader sense and experimental tradition in Serbian pedagogy and long-lasting processes to formulate scientific research methodology in this field, as well as in institutional domains, which can be described in, in terms of interplay, discontinuity, breaks, rather than in a holistic manner. And it was very important for, uh, for us to address uh, this question of discontinuity, as Masha mentioned, uh, in this respect, because uh, of the sudden discontinuity with uh, the pedagogical ideas and uh, practices uh, that follow the Second World War. So, um, Masha was um, among um, few um, theoreticians of uh, pedagogy and pedagogists who uh, didn't um, um, uh, uh, broke these connections with the uh, with um, pre-war um, pedagogical, not just like traditions, but uh, spe special ideas. And um, she was, uh, she strongly uh, relied on the work of um, uh, Vicente Rakic, who was um, a pedagogist uh, um, in the um, um, first half of the 19th century here in Serbia, uh, studied in uh, Germany. And he was um, a figure that brought um, um, ontological dimensions of human being in uh, being seen um, the um, discourse of um, uh, pedagogy as a science. Before him, uh, Voice of Bakic, as I mentioned, work on uh, constituting uh, pedagogy as a um, um, uh, university discipline but uh, he was focusing on this normative aspect of on what uh, education is and what uh, education should be. But in Vijan Tijerakic, in his work, um, um, Pedagogy Through Play and Art, uh, was um, uh, thinking of something which is very similar to praxis orientation. So he was uh, considering the potentiality within the human being uh, and he was um, uh, he um, determined that potentiality in uh, um, uh, the um, he named two forces within the human being. One was the forces for um, change and uh, the forces for conservation. So Mas Marshall also mentioned that the praxis was considering these um, uh, forces to, of um, opening and uh, closed system. So there is some kind of a uh, connection between that. But uh, Vijan Tijerakic uh, was, after the World War, War II, he was uh, underestimated, his, his work was underestimated because uh, um, of some kind of a bourgeoisie character of his uh, work, but um, uh, in um, Marjanovic developed her project um, strongly relying on uh, work of Vicente Rakic. Um, and uh, also uh, she was, um, uh, she relies on um, work of Bosilka Gligorievic. She was um, preschool pedagogy uh, pedagogist uh, and professor at the University of Belgrade, and she was um, at, at, uh, in the uh, era because uh, Yugoslavia was, was in the first uh, half in the first. Um, uh, five years after the World War II, Yugoslavia was strongly oriented to, towards Soviet models of uh, economic um, development, but uh, in the um, uh, domain of pedagogical ideas, there were some uh, original thinkers. Marjanovic, throughout his work, she was never um, uh, she never relied on uh, these. Um, dogmatic thinkers uh, in uh, the history of 
ideas, um, pedagogical ideas in this region. So uh, even in the period of um, Soviet um, uh, influences in uh, Yugoslavia, which was uh, very dominant uh, um, in um, first five years after the World War II, um, there were some thinkers like Bosilka Gligorievic in preschool education who uh, considered um, play and creativity and uh, who tried to uh, um, develop uh, something which can be uh, authentic Yugoslav uh, preschool education, not just uh, models that were imposed outside of the country. Uh, so just something like this. Mm -hmm. This, I think, is very important, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so. So, yes, that is, maybe we can just uh, uh, end up with this um, notion of uh, pedagogy as, as a science and, and uh, Sanda's take on pedagogy as a scientific discipline and the key four tasks, according to her, uh, before we, we start, uh, we give the uh, floor to Anna to, to speak about her pedagogical ideas. What was very interesting is she, she writes about pedagogy as a discipline in, in many different places, and she doesn't give summary of her take uh, on, on pedagogy as a discipline. But through our, her work, there are four main tasks that, that she sees as a task of pedagogy. And the first one is awareness and knowledge on human capacities in general, and also child human capacities. Uh, then she speaks about taking a critical approach to existing educational praxis or practice. And third, creation of conceptions of education that will be answer to this critical approach. So what kind of concepts do we need in education to expand boundaries of uh, child uh, and I would dare to say teacher self-creation uh, through uh, life living and, uh, and relations with others. And fourth, uh, how a pedagogy can help us as a discipline to work with potentials of institutional education for emancipation. So for her institutional education is not only a necessity, but actually a field of potentialities uh, and, and she was working uh, to explore these potentialities. So this is the framework of, of her take on uh, scientific approach to education. Okay. And now we can see what are the ideas within that. Right. Uh, yes, thank you. I, uh, I will now present uh, where I think Sandra's ideas come from and uh, how I think she developed them. Let me just uh, share my presentation and uh, try to share the full screen. Okay. Uh, so I called it a uh, uh, Sandra Marianovic in search of an open creative authorial uh, pedagogy. Uh, and I'll say why I say authorial. She didn't use that uh, term herself, but uh, as Masha already said, stvaralaštvo, a Serbian word is more is something more than creativity, and it contains this dimension of authorship much more than creativity in English. So uh, let's see if I can uh, move it. Uh, you already saw in Masha's presentation this picture from 1961 when she was about 35 years old, and that was uh, on an occasion of her uh, travel to the United States when she got a grant to come for six months here and work as a social worker in Chicago. So that's connection, Artin, that you didn't know. That's one more connection to you. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, let me just tell you a little bit about Sanda's life because that I think grounds her main ideas. In the upper left corner, you see a uh, typical kind of middle uh, European uh, small town in which Sanda was born. It was called Vinkovci in Croatia. 
uh, and uh, she was born when her family uh, already uh, had made a uh, great economical success. Actually, her parents didn't want to have children before they became rich. And so she, uh, her parents had a, uh, uh, were merchants and they developed a uh, big uh, empire of uh, a department store that sold everything from candy to cars or uh, they sold uh, uh, wholesale and retail and had a really very uh, developed a very big business uh, from zero to to that just before the world war second and she was born in 1926 and so grew, growing up uh, in already established the richness of her family, you, you can see her here at one Purim uh, uh, event, uh, dressed as a little Mozart. Purim in, uh, in uh, Jewish tradition is a festival when there are all kinds of uh, masked, uh, ma masked balls and things like that. Uh, so a relatively really uh, pampered in many ways. Uh, there are many anecdotes in our lives about how she uh, she had a nanny that was her fa favorite and and helped her in and not helped her actually did most of uh, her education until she started the first school. So her family was a, uh, a mixed. Uh, her mother was Jewish. Her father was uh, Serbian from Bosnia. And the, uh, on her Jewish side, she had a lot of uncles and aunts and uh, cousins. Uh, all of that stopped at the beginning of the Second World War when the rest of her whole family was uh, killed by, at that time, uh, Croatian uh, uh, fascist Nazis Ustashi. And uh, by a fluke of a uh, fate, she and her just parents uh, were first incarcerated in some work camp in Croatia and also again with the fluke of, of luck uh, were sent to Belgrade where you see on the bottom a uh, uh, picture Belgrade was bombed at the beginning of the Second World War. This is a center city uh, where one of these bombs so and not only bombing then but it, it's already breaking break in the whole a uh, way of life is sudden uh, and very violent. So uh, she, uh, uh, in that uh, upheaval, lost one, all her family besides her parents. And among them was a, uh, uh, her cousin Raul, who was uh, seven years old at that time. She was 15, 16 when that happened. And the, uh, he, Raul was the only child, uh, the only member of the family that they never had a positive proof that he was killed. The story was that he was sent to a uh, Dachau by the Germans. And uh, since he was a very blonde uh, young boy, my mother and her mom uh, always thought that it could, there could be a possibility that he survived maybe adopted by a German family because some children from the children unit in Dachau were adopted by the Germans uh, and passed as Aryans. And uh, they, they searched for him for more than 10 years after the war in the displaced person and tried to find any info information they never could. So I thought that uh, yeah, this kind of a uh, very, uh, a very traumatic uh, event in her life and uh, the way how she searched for her cousin left some indelible uh, impact on her. So I thought, I, and I know that from my childhood that her life mission was to emancipate childhood by emancipating and upbringing education. The picture is here from when she was 16 years old in Belgrade. So she, her strength in whatever she was doing and, and her commitment to emancipated childhood, I think uh, uh, came from this dramatic loss of her own childhood, her cousin, and the profound empathy for the lost children of the war. war. Uh, she even during the war is, uh, started working 
with the resistance movement, but always on the side of helping some uh, orphan children or other uh, children who are in need. And right after the Second World War, she was first working in various uh, institutions that were for children protection or children a culture or something like that. So her vision was uh, of the world was a uh, where a child can author her or his her personality or the word is also not very good in English because uh, as in other Slavic languages Russian to lichnost uh, in uh, uh, our language is, is uh, something a little bit different, uh, uh, something that's not uh, individual or personality that's in opposition to the social, but uh, uh, develops within the social community as, as a person with, the, with its, her own universe in self, let's say, as uh, somebody who has a stance, who is, uh, can, can make their face in the community as a person of integrity and all of that. So in that, there is this profound feeling of self uh, yeah, responsibility to make yourself into a, a good person or to author yourself as a personality, as a lichness. Uh, so part of that, as I already said, the child life is strongly connected or reconnected to her or his family or the communities, he's a member of the community or she. And so the child is not in a, some closed institution cut off from her family society in the world, but can be a member of the world community. Uh, the child can, uh, in her vision should be deeply intertwined with the society and its culture. And the child is a full-fledged participant in societies what she called public sphere. And that's actually a, a, a concept of, uh, that's uh, written by Habermas a lot. And uh, then uh, also um, uh, developed by some socialist Marxist thinkers that uh, she read Necht and Kluge, not very known here. And the, um, she thought that the child should be supported in pursuing and creating his or or her own life plan, a životni plan or životni nacat life plan by creating his or her own person or a subjectivity or lichnos and relationships with others in the world. So this is, I think, some kind of like core of her heartbeat to what her desire was to make in the world, both in a, as a theoretician, a scientist, a pedagogue, and, and as active uh, in all of that. So here are some of her main ideas. I see them like an arc that uh, she developed to, uh, to, to kind of systematize and find uh, what is important and significant and makes sense for her. As Marsha already mentioned, uh, her ideas come from many, many sources, philosophy, psychology, sociology, uh, literature, poetry, science. She read uh, very fluently in four languages, uh, Serbian not, uh, was one of them, but in German, which was uh, her actually first language that she spoke, uh, or maybe Yiddish, but it was, she always said it was Austrian German. Uh, she was fluent in Russian, in English, and, and French, so she could really cover a very wide uh, uh, sources. And Masha already talked about the praxis group, so I'm just going to go very quickly uh, over that. Uh, Mar the praxis group in Yugoslavia uh, that was developing this neo-Marxist theory had synergy with the philosophers of Marcuse, Broch from... Hammer, Master Favor, and so on. Um, we don't have to dwell on that. And uh, yeah, I just here want to say a part of her activism, uh, besides her ideas, was working on this political uh, um, uh, statute of the General Foundations of Preschool Program, Model A. And a little bit later, maybe if we have time, we can talk about at the same time in 1975 that Yugoslavia developed two parallel uh, official approaches to edu preschool education. So they had the model A 
and model B and each institution or organization could choose which one of these two to follow. Uh, model A was geared, uh, she developed, Sandra developed that model A toward development and support actually of self-development of personality or whole person of the child. The model B was more uh, traditionally now, let's say traditionally and already in the 70s geared to education or schoolification or let's say support of the cognitive abilities and development, cognitive development of children, um, much narrower. Uh, so what was uh, her point of view or her perspective? What could it mean to create a new society or a new polity in that era of the beginning of uh, Yugoslavia as uh, cut, uh, cut itself from Soviet Union, uh, but still very inspired by ideas, Marxistic ideas of communist uh, 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 countries or, or communist ideas? What does it mean for Yugoslavia and for her idea of early childhood education? Uh, for her, it meant to support each person's development as a lichnost or as a personality as I already thought in their quest to create their own way of relating to the world, to, uh, to find their own center and perspective in relation to, to the self, to others and to the world to keep searching for or desiring and living one's own life plan. So to constantly uh, be able to control uh, what's gonna go, who they want to be and what they want to do in life from the or earliest age. Uh, and she thought that relationships uh, a person has with others are not reduced to the bare necessities of economic production and this is part of the neo-Marxist approach that uh, didn't want to take only the pro uh, re relationship of the production, the, the economical aspect of Marxist theory, but this uh, yeah, symbolic development or, or a uh, human development as a human. So um, it meant emancipation of people uh, th that enables them to continue freely creating their lives in multiple spheres of culture and life. Uh, human practices and relationships should be guided by self-determination. Uh, I put a little asterisk there because in Serbian, uh, self-determination uh, actually is self, uh, um, uh, uh, self-management. It could be translated as self-management. And Yugoslavian flavor of, of socialism was called self-management socialism that was developed as an ideology and so, so, let's say partially a praxis in Yugoslavia. Of course, it, uh, we can go in big critiques about what it was in practice, but uh, at least in the ideology that there was that idea of uh, the right for self-determination. Engagement in the multiplicity of interests, desires, passions, and projects that a, that a person can uh, want to do, and the transcendence of the principle of biological evolution driven by the necessities in which only the fittest can survive. Uh, so a critique of Darwinism that everything is predetermined and everything is uh, what happens serves some kind of... Uh, cause of uh, uh, preserving your just bare necessities of life, but being able to transcend into something else. And in her vision, emancipation of early childhood upbringing and education uh, should come from the uh, emancipating from the institutionalization and segregation driven by the life necessities and the oppressive economic relationships into an open societal, life of creative pedagogical practice. So you can sum in one sentence what, uh, what she thought. Uh, in, in the tradition of this humanist uh, uh, vision, human development always means creating culture. Uh, 
human as a species transcends biological evolution through the flexibility complex, adapting to the environment, not by adapting the body, but by building culture, symbols, language, music, art, dance, rituals, religion, ethical beliefs, tools, ways of living, and so on. So in that sense, it was a sociocultural approach. Uh, she was actually not directly influ influenced by Vygotsky first, but I think by Brunner and then Braun from Brenner. I, Vygotsky was there looming, but uh, not as a main uh, source of inspiration. Uh, but this, uh, this vision of the uh, importance of culture for be being and becoming human as a different type of evolution or development in which creativity is the paramount way of cultural development. So because the, the human person is, first of all, an uh, author of uh, the environment, changing the environment and changing self, creativity is something that is in the core of that process. Uh, uh, and flexibility complex, she took that the uh, expression, I think, from Brunner and from his uh, studies of uh, uses of immaturity. So that that's the most important uh, kind of trait of human species, among other species, that they are not predefined, but they can always transform. And so that flexibility needs to be built into that through creativity, where play is then a necessary condition and practice of creativity or play or playfulness. Uh, so the human person or personality, Lichner, is an individual subjectivity, becomes a, hu a person becomes a human or transcends its biological nature through socialization, again, I'm putting that in the quotes because in Serbian that word would not mean just becoming a part, uh, yeah, just subduing yourself into the existing, but by creatively participating into the culture, becoming a participant and a co-author in the cultural meaningful and meaning making life of one's community. So that, that means becoming a human. And so the uh, pedagogy of in early childhood education and upbringing should uh, support this becoming. And uh, we had a lot of talks uh, uh, when I was already working as a uh, uh, young psychologist uh, or psycho uh, uh, professor of psychology at the University in Novi Sad about what does uh, Lichnos mean? And we came to this uh, uh, idea that a person is a universe built by creative activities and practices of each individual in building one's own inner culture so that each personality is actually a whole universe, just like the whole culture in which he or she lives is. But uh, my vision of that, I mean, <laughs> there are some ideas here that are really co-constructed between her and me. And sometimes I really don't know, is it mine or hers? The one of them, them is probably hers or mine, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so that would uh, necessi uh, necessitate uh, changes in upbringing, education and care um, uh, in certain ways. Of course, uh, yeah, here I put care as a, as a asterisk because in, in the Slavic languages, again, there is a different uh, uh, conceptualization of what's vaspitanie and obrazovanie, or similarly maybe to like in German, the, uh, uh, the Erziehung and Bildung. Uh, one uh, kind of uh, upbringing is a more uh, ethical raising children to become uh, ethical people and members of the community, which is holistic, while a uh, obrazovanie is more uh, defined by the uh, enlightenment ideas of a, uh, uh, becoming knowledgeable, rational, and so on. And briga in Slavic is this care, it's just like caring for somebody. So she saw, uh, this is how she envisioned what was going on in the uh, modernity, let's say, uh, that the family as a community uh, of life and the production uh, was the primary unit, in, uh, the primary community in which uh, uh, young children developed throughout centuries. But within the technological industrial revolution, 
it became it started disintegration uh, of the family as such a unit of, of such a community and uh, because of that children uh, children's ro role in the family is really changed from an asset uh, of a community where they participate in the life of the community according to what they can participate but always bring value to the community, both economic, uh, emotional, cultural, in every way, to becoming a burden where the the, the, uh, the life of the adults is not anymore within the family. Everybody's life is displaced, actually, and children's too. And so upbringing, education, and care are displaced from the family unit. And uh, the consequences of that is that the child loses uh, participation in the social practices of the community or family. The child loses the models and patterns of behavior in the family community that uh, he or she can observe as they grow up uh, as a whole richness of pa patterns of behavior as she called them. And the child loses the possibility to create his or her own criteria for relating to life as a human being because now they are stopped being part of that community cult culture making. Uh, and also, of course, the society responds to the, to, the to the part of the necessity of the losing family as a unit by creating various babysitters and in babysitting houses or by institutionalization, uh, various crashes, daycares, preschool centers, kindergarten. But what does it actually mean then for uh, uh, and the environment in which the child grows up uh, in this institutionalization of upbringing. Uh, from the social upbringing in the family, child development uh, becomes regulated by, on one hand, economic and pedagogical, psychological models of intervention, uh, which, what does it mean? Segregation of children from the rest of the society into a separate group. They are not any more members of the cultural sphere of life. That for the child means the, context, the contextualization of the child life, life from the social practices and the loss of participation in the public sphere of discourse and culture. And adults lose their parenting function, uh, which is thwarting their development as parents and their possibility to realize fully themselves in, through their parental uh, beings. That also means that the uh, children development is now standardized and normatized, normativized in the institutionalized context. And the uh, role of a teacher is, technolo uh, is technologized. So the teacher becomes a professional, not anymore a human being who lives with the child, but a technician who processes children. She was very uh, often talking about the uh, pre early childhood preschool education as processing of children and the child as a pedagogical object. Uh, so all of these are forces against life as being and becoming human. It, uh, they suppress uh, the unpredictability of creativity. They suppress playfulness in people's relationships and practice. Uh, they suppress self-determination. And uh, so this is kind of like, this kind of institutionalization is really detrimental for, uh, for the human, human way of living among people. So, uh, Part of the solution, potential solution, she came, uh, saw back in the way how uh, in, in studying creativity and play and their meaning for the, the life, for the development of the child and society. So she saw creativity as the paramount way of cultural development and play as a necess necessary condition and practice of creativity. Some, uh, uh, of her critiques, for instance, uh, she cri critiqued Erickson, who said child play is an infantile form of human ability to rework experience by creating models of, of situations and for controlling reality through experimenting and planning. 
In other words, the scientific literature on creativity often looks at play as simple prototype of a more complex phenomenon of creativity. Uh, Sanders' uh, critique was that very soon we realized that play is not at all a less complex phenomenon than creativity. In fact, like creativity, play is a phenomenon resisting contemporary methods of definition, exploration, and interpretation. And uh, indeed, these are all quotes from her. I is it even possible to find a common denominator for all the different forms of play and diverse acts, deeds, or again, she's using the Slavic uh, uh, concept of postupok or act, deeds, something uh, uh, that you do, but at the same time, it has an, a relational dimension, uh, uh, how you treat others with what you're doing. Uh, used to perform and realize play. Um, now coming from uh, from uh, back uh, from the development of species as a, a human species uh, about adaptation, flexibility, and play, she saw adaptation in people as, uh, is understood as being essentially different than in all other species. According to Marx, man does not adapt directly uh, by processing and transforming his environment. Moreover, to man, in this generic form, his own human nature is not a given, but instead it represents a behest that he set out to fulfill. This is a huge change of what she said in Serbian, but the only way I could translate, I think, this in English, because in Serbian it's a uh, really a play of words between a given and a task, which is that and zadat. That datos and zadatak, but so there is this dimension that uh, a person has uh, a mission to find who or she is and fulfill that mission. Through processing environment in play, man realizes his own uh, physical and psychological potential. That is, the man establishes himself as a human, as a person. And simultaneously, he also changes the essential characteristics of his habitat. That is, he creates his non-graphic, a non-organic body, the culture and the human reality. This altered way of adaptation is the essential characteristic of human and of humans and the source of all human psychological and sociological features. And she said, we can conclude therefore that the function of play is dual. On one hand, it enables diverse uses of ca the capacity for flexibility. And on the other hand, it prevents patterns of behavior and related psychological functions from becoming fixed and rigid. So this is where she saw the importance of play. Uh, the structural and functional aspects of play, she described as strictly, I would say, from the Vygotskian view. Uh, that in play there is the imaginary plane uh, and the reality plane and that there are rules of play. Um, while the imaginary plane provides general material and psychological conditions for the transformation of experience and behavior, the rules of play directly instigate these transformations since they launch the specific acts, deeds, leading to the realization of these transformations. So here she used the very interesting American philosopher Reynolds, who pointed to the fact that there are particular moments when the when play ceases to be a simulation of reality and becomes a creation of reality. New patterns of behavior that can emerge in play and can be adapted and incorporated into real behavior. Uh, it's also Vygotsky's idea. Uh, of the zone of proximal development that in play some new things appear and then they gradually become the reality of the person. He's a metaphor that in play a child is uh, taller for a head than in reality and the whole idea that everything first starts in play and then it becomes real. It's an, an assumption that play is the key to understanding why and how a child can transform an existing internal urge or an external pressure or a, or a strain into an object of his own decision and will. 
in this sense plays profoundly relevant to our understanding that human nature is not a given, but instead represents a behest one is set out to fulfill and that therefore one is obliged to lead his own life. So to return this uh, idea of the complex of flexibility and play and creativity back into the pedagogies, uh, she was looking at how, uh, what are the pedagogical practices we play in early childhood education. And she said, diverse concepts of play are the basis of every system of preschool education. And we will discuss, uh, cover a theory of play in it as its main integrative component that defines the meanings and the unity of the educational methods, content, and techniques from 75. So there are two general approaches in the contemporary to her pedagogies to directly use play towards some educational goal to a greater or lesser degree, depending on the conception of education. And uh, she criticizes that. We already know that in such circumstances, the special significance of play ordinarily has for the child declines from a voluntary, irresistible, joyful activity turns into a serious, sometimes boring and frequently troublesome task. She said, remember that already Tolstoy visiting some Fredelian kindergarten said that their children play crime. Uh, or the other way to use play in education is to leave play in its alleged natural condition, to not meddle into play, let children play alone. She criticized that too. Young children play only under certain social circumstances from Brunner. They need adult support, mutual play, and conditions for various inspirational experiences. Uh, this is deeper than that. Uh, there is an idea from Marie S that childhood as a certain kind of a, uh, uh, entity is a modern invention, uh, 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 conceptual invention, and the adults and children live together, or at least youth and children over three or four years, and play belonged to everyone, so that the richness of play was not confined just to the early childhood or even middle childhood, but it was a part of the whole social sphere. It is obvious that children cannot play in vacuum left to themselves. And so what would be her solution of so-called cultivation of play? What does it mean actually cultivation of play? Is it possible to cultivate children's play in order to support the development of children's creative capacities? Uh, for her, it would mean transfer the basic features of play to all other activities, including the practice of upbringing and education. So, so what are the, uh, the, the kind of like really conceptual uh, uh, principles of play and use that to create your pedagogical practice? It is necessary to take the opposite route from the subordinating play to education. We should not subordinate play to the principles of other activities, but rather these activities, learning, for example, should be subordinated to the principles of flexibility where play now has a great uh, uh, significance. So what does it mean to support creativity and the child per uh, personality in all activities by following principles of play in every educational practice? And the, these principles of play, she saw three of them, that there exist intimate relationships of mutuality between the child and adult, uh, uh, that uh, they have mutual relationship as human beings, first of all. Uh, the child's involvement and participation in the living experiences involving both high quality indirect role models of creative behavior and the rich and diverse human practices so that the child has uh, a rich uh, life in the social and cultural sphere of uh, uh, of the community and the society in, where she, she or he can have these indirect role models or patterns of behavior of different, many different people, uh, professions, uh, yeah, practices in which they can observe and see and experience life. And finally, 
because that gives play a specific relationship to life. And finally, that uh, there should be a rich and diverse cont contacts with peers and opportunities to be also opportunities to be alone, shielded from the public and given space for non-surveilled personal intimate needs, feelings and thoughts. Uh, this is very important part of her. Uh, uh, let me just one moment get, go into my notes, if I may. Upbringing is an encounter between an adult and a child for her. The quality of this encounter is formative for upbringing. Uh, symbolic play is entirely oriented toward the child life situation and an intimate experience of the self among the others. The play serves the child's desire to find a sense of his own life and the life of other people. Um, so let me just uh, then continue. Um, here. So let me go back a little moment. Uh, so early childhood upbringing and education should be seen as an open societal practice and not institutionalized. Uh, but that would mean reintegration of children into the social cultural spheres of public discourse and culture, relationships of partnership and collaboration among ad adults and children, a relationship in which true dialogue is possible, which was later elaborated by her colleague Mima Pesic, and probably I'm working on that some in some ways, where play, creativity, and the sense of unique personal and group authorship, sources of both individual and societal development. There is freedom uh, built in their education as a personal sphere of sphere of decision making and self-discovery and self-determination as the main guiding principle of education. Uh, so that's about uh, Sanda. Uh, <laughs> if you want to see uh, how my research and, and my professional uh, path goes in relationship to hers, I can also show you that. But this should conclude uh, uh, what Sanda's life work and and her arc of uh, thought was from my point of view i took a long time <laughs> and so now uh if you marshall wants to conclude with your uh particular uh take and then we will conclude yes i can i can say all of this in a little bit different way and also to put focus more than on open curriculum and teaching and learning so we can i can now continue with that and i will not i will try not to repeat what was already said uh, by anna but rather to well something is uh, okay Okay, so so uh, for me, uh, what is the framework of, of Sanda's pedagogical project is this conception of creative education. And Anna already uh, said a lot, uh, a lot about that. Uh, but I will point out a couple of things that maybe uh, combine now and uh, complement Anna's stake. Uh, when it comes to this overall conception of creative education or stvaralačko vaspitanje, the purpose of education in a general sense would be that both upbringing and education as a holistic process is a backbone of development of creative personalities. And creative personality here is not about some uh, um, creative capacities here and there, but rather this creative personality uh, for Sanda is an expression of ontological and ethical sense. And Anna already spoke about this capacity of flexibility that is the base of human being. And at the same time, creative personality is not someone who is a little bit creative, but rather creative personality would mean ongoing self-creation through action. And uh, Sanda is giving an image of the child, an image of a teacher as this self-created personality. 
Uh, another important point is her take on development. She elaborates that development is not a linear process, but rather a process of expansion. And what does it mean uh, for her? It means widening and overcoming boundaries. Uh, boundaries which are personal, but also so so social uh, boundaries. And when she speaks about this uh, uh, take on education, she, she speaks also about social and political potentials of this education. And I will not elaborate more, but we can discuss what that could mean later on. And also, uh, of one of the main uh, processes of creative education is creative action or stvaralački postupak, creative action deed, act deed. And again, as ontological, uh, again, as a way of being and as a modality of participating in the world and also modality of creating knowledge in the world. And uh, she speaks also about creative capacities of an individual but also creative capacities of a social group, uh, that it happens always in tension between forces of conservation and, course, and forces of revolution. And these forces of conservation are uh, 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 forces of preserving what already exists. So uh, our life has a capacity uh, for adaptation to the existing conditions, but at the same time, capacities of flexibility or capacity for creation or revolution. And what is, uh, uh, what is the main, uh, I would say, feature of this capacity of flexibility? That is our potential to variate experiences through participation with others. So we don't need to follow uh, uh, already established patterns of relations, of way of knowing, but rather we can engage in variation of these experiences in relations with others. And as these tensions of uh, forces of conservation and uh, uh, evolution uh, can be seen in each of us as human beings, they can also be seen in education and culture as social and cultural phenomena. So education uh, uh, on one stance is about reproduction of culture or rather keeping ongoing these courses, but also challenging them and not only uh, producing and reproducing culture, but rather co-creation of culture. And again, in relation between uh, generations or in relation between children and adults. And, and as Anna already mentioned, uh, what is her vision then in the pedagogical project? This is the vision that principles of creativity should become a framework of educational system. So the goal is to preserve and further develop creative and explorative act deeds that children spontaneously develop in their play. So uh, creative activities suppose, according, according to, to Sanda, uh, supposed to become a central activity in education. And how? Through creating conditions for child to be a participant in life living events in various human practices, and uh, creating uh, opportunities for children to become a part of public sphere and even further develop their own public sphere. And she calls that children's public sphere. So that children's ideas, that children's problems, that children's takes on problems could become also part of the public discourses and practices. Then she speaks about intimate relations between children, children and adults, between children uh, uh, among themselves, but also intimate relation with oneself. And Anna already spoke about that. And in this kind of education, children's life experiences and life problems are supposed to be in focus and children's ongoing searching for sense or making sense should be integral part of education while creative activities of play and exploration should be a backbone of the process of education. So this is the vision. And uh, that vision was an answer on her critique of institutionalization of education. And I will just shortly come through this because Anna was speaking already about that. Uh, for some, the uh, preschool education at that time became a social project. And the consequence of that is instrumentalization of preschool education. 
And this instrumentalization of preschool education, which means that preschool education became a social project with certain political purposes, with certain pedagogical, psychological models that started to shape the reality of children's lives. Uh, also, she, she uh, looked uh, historically how we came to this uh, point, and she spoke about the contextualization of education, segregation of children as a social group, and their separateness uh, uh, in between children's and, and adults' lives and social practices. Okay, and uh, the system of preschool education started to respond to social, political, and economical changes at that time. And we could even see uh, that at this point of history, uh, all these processes uh, are even uh, more visible and, and even more significant for children's lives. So the contextualization of education is even more present, segregation of children even more present, and children and adults of the world are even more separated today. So it's very interesting how, how these concepts and these take on, on the current situation 50 years ago was only exaggerated during the, the this time. Uh, and for, for some of the problem was that uh, uh, she says we, but in the society we, we have started to look at early childhood education as an efficient cure for the number of social and educational problems as a means of supporting children's cognitive development in early childhood, a resource of intellectual capital of the society, as a tool for ensuring an equal start in education, a solution to accumulated problems in education, and as a way to mitigate consequences of the existing social cultural inequalities and compensate the so-called social cultural deficits. And by doing that, we subordinate pedagogical purpose of early childhood education to a social one. And we also subordinate uh, life of preschool children to the institutional logic. And then encounter between children and adults, which is so important, which is the essence of education, became an encounter, not in between <laughs> in personalities and individuals, but rather between two types of roles the role of a preschool teacher and the role of a preschool child. And each of these roles, they carry certain ways of being, thinking and acting. What is inbuilt is asymmetric relations and the content of education is uh, subordinated to mastering competences. So it's not about exploring the world anymore, but rather practicing through certain content, how to master uh, competences. And the consequence consequences alienation and weakening of relations between children and adults and impoverishing life and education. So this was her critique on, uh, on the current situation of, of education. And as an answer, she proposed a paradigm of open education. And open education, uh, as a paradigm is uh, her take and a vision of education that values life in its relationality, complexity, and creativity. And actually life is a source of education, not the other way around. And for uh, in this vision, education is a process of open creation and self-creation. And education uh, on a more concrete level becomes uh, open to immediate social surrounding open to various forms of life and culture, open to put the world and life into question and to embrace children's living problematics. So that is the starting point for the open system of education. And when it comes to learning and teaching, Marianovic was inspired by Freire and, and uh, uh, Zimmer in, in particular. And the open education uh, uh, would, according to her, uh, would be built uh, through being with the world. So she invites both children and adults to be in the world uh, and to be with the world. And what does that mean? That means in constant dialogue with the world. We can see her Freirean influence here. And in education, uh, we're supposed to start from right, uh, real life living situations 
because real life living situations of children and adults are related to wider questions of human condition and conditions of the world. So by focusing to the here and now and the questions that emerge from everyday life, we can come to these wider questions that are relevant in education. And uh, Sante is also inviting us to acknowledge children and their way of relating to the world and the problems and questions that they pose and their strategies to approach these questions and problems, which are often uh, unique and often different than take of adults. So she speaks about children being engaged with existential questions and saying that despite how young children are, they're always capable of posing questions to life and their own situation. And, and then when she speaks about uh, uh, learning and teaching, Oops, this is, and the problem posing edu education, uh, she speaks about uh, children and teachers um, joining around the common problems and trying to find solution for those problems. Uh, and she says that solving and presently transcending and outgrowing problems means that we find a solution that at this point makes sense for children and for us as adults so that the problem doesn't occupy our uh, attention with the same intensity. That doesn't mean to find final solution, but rather solution for the moment and solution for current life problematic of, of children. And by finding solutions for these problems, she, uh, she says that children are outgrowing themselves. Uh, and they, they are finding new ways how to relate and create with the world. And actually, this is the common point between children and adults. This is how we all learn and grow, by addressing problems that, that occupy us, finding solutions that make sense, and extending our ways of relating to the world. Uh, the, the role of adults then becomes encouraging children to engage with their problems, encouraging them to examine relations around the problem, to examine different angles, to imagine, to experiment, to challenge existing ways of knowing and thinking, to play with ideas and thoughts, to try out their ideas in various contexts, and to reveal different aspects of those problems. So it is always creative take on, on problems. Then she also speaks that teaching and learning uh, is closely interwoven. Teachers join children, they become learners themselves, and they create conditions for dialogue and exploration. And they also participate uh, uh, in authentic way. Uh, so they are, not, of course, not imposing their ideas, but they're freely sharing their ideas with children. And I think this is very important, this kind of mutuality. So it's not only following children, it's not stepping back and just providing conditions and leaving children, but rather actively participating by recognizing what is meaningful for us as adults in children's problems and questions. And if we, uh, if we find this, these problems that are um, irresistible for us, that are meaningful for us, then education also has an activist dimension because it opened uh, uh, up a, a sphere to, to ask also political, ethical question, to question uh, views of, uh, of children and, and adults and uh, already established ways of thinking. And now shortly to finish with this, uh, she also develops this uh, idea of an open curriculum as a, a live script. And she makes a distinction between curriculum as predefined document and open curriculum, which is a living process and a matter of continuity of experience. And this is very interesting. Etymological sense of curriculum vitae uh, and, uh, and curriculum, uh, that curriculum vitae is actually the creation of life and, and, uh, and self. And uh, what curriculum does as an open process in early childhood education, in it, it interprets and conceptualizes a flow of common life living and learning of teacher, children, uh, and parents. And it's always developed in time, in relation, 
And I think this is also interesting and it connects acting and thinking. And I would say acting and thinking of both children and, and uh, teachers. And how does it uh, look like in the practice? Uh, that looks like that the teacher uh, is uh, asked to pick up questions and problem, the problems that children pose, and also to follow strategies uh, that children have to address their problems. And the teacher asking how to sustain and expand ongoing children's exploration, then creating a context, arranging situation, providing different means, context, forms of expression, encouraging children to explore their ideas, to share their ideas, then choosing a question to be the focus in the focus next, uh, supporting ongoing exploration and organizing these pedagogical meetings and pedagogical dialogue between children and between children and teachers. And in that sense, pedagogical documentation uh, follows that process and becomes some kind of biographical or a life living story. And as you in dialogic pedagogy like to, to end your <laughs> ideas and elaboration with a question, what do you think? So Anna, I will, I will finish this with what do you think, whoever you are, <laughs> and whatever, you whatever your thoughts are. All of you who, uh, who heard it maybe first time. Then. What are your exactly? So that's um, inspirations or questions or comments, feedback. So yes, this is the take on on Sanda's ideas that uh, that I try to develop here further in the Swedish context as well and through empirical research in preschool in Belgrade. Could I ask for Brian to introduce himself first? Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> sure, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, well, Brian, you can see on Zoom there. <laughs> I'm a graduate student at the University of Delaware. I'm also a, a high school teacher in the United States um, where I teach uh, high school sociology and psychology and uh, a cultural diversity course to juniors and seniors. So mostly 16, 17 and 18 year old high school students. Um, so that's my full-time job. I'm on sabbatical this year um, towards the end of my PhD program, and uh, Eugene is my advisor. Mm -hmm. And you forgot to say that you studied the problems of institutionalized uh, education, and in that sense, here are some solutions on a preschool education level that uh, offered, and maybe they relate to you in certain ways. Yeah, right. So most of my um, interest is is really understanding teacher professionalism, particularly in context of an institution, a bureaucratic institution. That's most of the focus of my research. So um, I had a bit of internet problems, so my apologies for joining the meeting late, but um, um, I can see where some of these things are applicable, though I, I, I didn't quite grasp everything that was presented, of course. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. And thank you, Artin, for um, noticing that in this introduction. Uh, may I uh, say something? Sure, uh, first of all, uh, I'm very happy to um, be present, that I'm here and that I heard this presentation. Uh, I just realized that today is the third day of Hanukkah and that uh, on a day of light that this, this uh, comes across as a very illuminating presentation to me. So uh, thank you. And I just didn't know that uh, your mother was such a wonderful childhood educator, Anna. So uh, that is another very important contribution to me. For me, uh, the most important part of this presentation is that she so play as a creative activity. Uh, least uh, recently I have been um, following some communication on XMCA and hearing presentations um, uh, claiming that for Vygotsky, for example, creativity didn't start until adolescence, if I understood them properly. Uh, <laughs> for me, 
Uh, yes, I want to uh, know exactly what uh, Eugene will take us to regarding this issue. I thought that All Along Play is one of the uh, most original creative activities of humanity. Uh, so uh, as a corollary to that, I also enjoyed hearing that your mother thought, Sandra, we are calling her now, uh, thought of play and play as a creative activity isn't specific to childhood, but it is present all throughout human development and existence, which I love because this is part of my work that I have been trying to, <clears throat> excuse me, develop recently. My question is a very fundamental basic one now. Can you give some sense of what she thought children's daily lives should be like? What kinds of activities did she think teachers and parents should be presenting for the children? Or did she talk about actual activities that preschool children should be exposed to or construct uh, as you would like maybe with adults? Well, uh, she always thought that the uh, life in the uh, a daycare should be in the hands of those who live there. So what appears to them that's meaningful, specifically for children, or uh, she talked about life, life uh, living in the moment and lifeful pedagogy. And we could maybe say ontological problems of uh, ontological issues. What's, what's today your theme for today like what's something that you're fascinated with or problems you have or anything and that uh, uh, there is no fixed curriculum or any recommendation for the uh, what's appropriate or not appropriate it depends on on the life circumstances for example she gives two examples when she speaks about life problematics So she says, for example, let's say that a child got a brother and a sister and he is dealing now with, with also mixed feelings about his own position in family and so on. So, for example, why not engaging if he's, let's say, in an older group in a preschool, why not inviting child and a group of peers to take care of, of babies in nurseries? and then by themselves discover the position of a very small child and their position as a bigger child and, and try to, to relate to the smaller child and understand how they can contribute to each other's life, for example. Or they say, let's say a, children, a group of children wants to build a house in the preschool. So how can we dedicate to this project of building a house in the preschool as exploration and as as actual praxis of building something. What do we need for that? How can we jointly uh, create this project of, of building a house? So in my thesis, for example, I try to, to, to develop further this take on, on life problematics and see how in the preschool, for example, uh, now we are trying to, to deal with the question of a friendship because there was some situation in the preschool that after 20 years of bombing of Serbia, Uh, one boy came to the preschool and said to his best friend with whom he has a conflict before, oh, I cannot be your friend anymore because your father is from the country that bombed our country. So I think we cannot be friends from now on. And then it was a lot of events after that, uh, that statement. The boy was very hurt, another boy. So they, there was a lot of mess around in the group. And then children were starting to discover how to reconnect and what the friendship really means. And at the end, they were speaking about football teams and how can you play football against each other if you are good friends? And they end up writing letters to foot, football players asking these questions and so on. And that was uh, one example, for example. Uh, of, I don't know if this gives you an answer, but that was... Yes, thank you.
One of the takes that I always had uh, about her work is that she tried to, uh, 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 Marsha mentioned that, uh, to put back the encounter of a human with a human instead of a role of a child, uh, of a preschool child uh, with the role of a preschool teacher. And uh, to, to kind of like uh, change what uh, Eugene would call teacher orientation. Uh, uh, for, of an adult who, who kind of like doesn't real, relate to the child uh, directly as another human being, but through the lens of wo what uh, a teacher's orientation should be, like what needs to be done, what the goal of actions should be, what the program is uh, uh, given to the teacher to realize and things like that. And so to, to to return back this kind of like living together, that's what she called it, living together. That uh, preschool uh, institution should become a place where people live together, including parents who, uh, she has a whole undeveloped part of uh, working on the issue of what's the role of parents in this whole preschool education endeavor, especially in the open. And she has a very critical uh, uh, position on the uh, uh, make uh, alienating parents from their own uh, pa uh, way, uh, own parenthood, and be putting them in a position where experts are telling them how and why they should do something with their children and infantilizing parents too in that sense in negative sense of infantilizing like the, uh, 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 taking the power out of the parents possibility of uh, a decision making for their own sake and with their own uh, rights but uh, if they would become part of the open education they would be again partners together with the teachers and children in creating this life together, in which then the parents' decisions could take, uh, be authentic to themselves. Of course, uh, there is a pluralism base uh, in, in the whole thing, and she didn't deal with the contradictions that come from there, that per se, because that was uh, just kind of like, there, there was a lot of that she didn't finish. She died very young. Uh, uh, and so, so to speak, suddenly, it was not suddenly in the larger picture, but uh, it was suddenly, and she didn't finish a lot of her uh, writing and a lot of her work. And, and we still miss some kind of uh, also empirical research to a great extent, I, I also would say, how these concepts were, uh, how they can be a living concept in the praxis, praxis of early childhood education. Yeah. If there is no other question, I have another one. Okay, sure. Everybody. Can you elaborate? Um, on her idea of emancipation? Um, I think from uh, talking to her and uh, throughout my life as a, her child and as her professional peer in some sense, that emancipation for her meant that a person becomes uh, free to make their own de determination of their own lives, uh, to, to be uh, equal uh, among the equals in in a human society and practices also uh, that should uh, so education should not be subordinated to the necessities of po political and the economic life it should become a sp sp sphere that say self uh, uh, ha has its own needs and rights and necessities for determination that come from from this pedagogical uh, field uh, rather than from whatever is uh, something else. And in that sense, I could say the instrumentalization, uh, freedom of uh, 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 having more, uh, at least if not freedom, that, but the right to make decisions based on uh, your best uh, assessment of whatever your life or your desires and other people are around. 
If I can just compliment Anna, I also think that this take on pedagogy, both as critical and creative discipline, uh, is also part of this project of emancipation. So being critical to the closing forces, and these are the forces that Anna was speaking with the subordination of the education to uh, economic terms, to predefined conceptions and so on. And at the same time, uh, uh, creating the ground for this uh, 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 answer to the current situation uh, through this open system of education. So, so I think emancipation was also on, on a several levels, uh, actually, on a societal level, and also on the level of the ongoing everyday praxis of early childhood education. And on individual level, like self-creation in an open terms. Thank you. Okay, so I also think that the, uh, she was a, a still part of the uh, 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 progressive education paradigm and developing that uh, in, in a huge way. And, and she felt uh, undefined and in many of her works uh, that it's, uh, it's not enough. There was a lot of something else that's not directly progressive education, kind of like looming around and she I know that she was very dissatisfied with what she was doing in many ways and she felt an urge to make some kind of a breakthrough into some other sphere but uh, but she was in the in between some something she was on on the verge of let's say some kind of like something else but never completely uh, never completely formulated it uh, I could say from from my now point of view that uh, yeah, as much as it uh, was liberating at that time for her and to, for many uh, 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 day, daycare centers and teachers, uh, preschool teachers, really, really, as uh, Masha said in the beginnings, found huge inspiration in her uh, because their practices are, were very uh, authoritarian and confined and very conservative practices, especially coming from the ideology really of communist ideology of creating everything from top down and the uh, uh, regimented. Uh, but still uh, she felt that the uh, 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 progressivism of what she was doing was had its, had its limits, so to speak, but she didn't know what else and how else. So I think she found this idea of uh, opening and creating societal education where the children are uh, again reconnecting to the public sphere of discourse and uh, cultural life as a, uh, as a potentiality, but not worked through actually what that could be further mean. Can I ask a question? Uh, and the way I'm following uh, after your um, line of inquiry, at least how I see it. Um, and because I found that uh, what I found uh, kind of missing for me is I tried to visualize what uh, she's suggesting. And again, that's not my area. That might be a I'm failing part of, impartially on that, but I'm trying to try to figure out and I cannot see it. I cannot kind of visualize certain things. Um, and specifically, I want to ask you, um, especially Anna, you, since you were very close to <laughs> just living at the same time with, with your mom, if she um, kind of, uh, first of all, whether or not she had opportunity to experiment in practice, that's going and trying to organize something that she thinks uh, she thought was right. That's one possibility. Another possibility, if she visited some other preschool institutions and almost like can point it out, oh, I like that, oh, I don't like that. In this case, it become much clearer what she meant. Uh, the third thing, uh, whether or not, okay, she might not do neither three of that, but, um, she, at least, I forgot, I'm sorry, is it uh, a master or uh, somebody else presented about her kind of 
critique of this kind of technological revolution or technological society, industrial technological society. And in this case, can she see that, for example, her ideas is impossible in her time? And she can start uh, kind of imagining different times for which her ideas might work. Whether or not it's present and correct, it's imagining. So uh, there are three possibilities that I presented, but could be probably more than three. Uh, uh, I almost wanted to see like her cartoon that she would develop of uh, her ideas, like how it looks like in reality. Yeah, and uh, so, I think, I, yeah, yeah. Let, let, uh, from, from what I know, and Marsha maybe knows more than me in certain ways, uh, uh, Sanders, a uh, uh, graduate student and then uh, assistant professor in, and her closest uh, yeah, collaborator, Mima Pesic, who I think you met, Eugene, and maybe you, uh, Artin, too, if uh, I think she came to an ISCAR in Rome, she was there with me or something. Mima started uh, uh, developing a uh, experimental uh, uh, daycare center where they uh, tried to experiment with action research, uh, which meant uh, uh, first time taping the uh, events and the uh, practices there, and then discussing it with, uh, but not with children as much as I know. I don't know much if they did discuss with children, but they discussed with the adults uh, uh, what happened uh, and their educational practices and try to change things from that point of view based on exactly ideas of living together and the, uh, becoming partners with children and not masters of children. So uh, Sanda had uh, through that uh, her collaborator big project and I have a lot of documentation of, of Mima's project that I didn't study yet and it's a uh, sitting for me to look at um, uh, secondly as, as your second question was did she go around and visit many places and like what she liked or alternative ways well yes she did one of the alternative ways of uh, early childhood education she found in Lubitsa's work and you we have Lubitsa right here uh, Artin does not know uh, much of that uh, maybe you do because you met Lubitsa but Lubitsa founded in 1981 uh, uh, right 82 early childhood education cultural center actually uh, cultural center for children of uh, preschool ages in which uh, uh, it was completely non-traditional uh, life. Uh, uh, people who worked with children were professionals in their own uh, way, artists, uh, actors, uh, yeah, writers, uh, computer specialists, uh, various uh, people of culture who wanted to share some part of their uh, life and work together with children. And uh, the children there had all kinds of different conditions than in any uh, regular preschool institution. And uh, I think that was uh, something that uh, uh, inspired Sandra too in many ways, it, at least it inspired me at that time. And I started working together with Dubica. Uh, a lot on what's going on in this uh, early childhood. I also, Yubitz also had an after school program in drama and education or drama program for children of the elementary uh, and middle school age from seven to 14. And the, uh, that was also very different than some acting schools that existed in Belgrade before that. So it was not to learn acting, but to, uh, uh, to, to, to uh, enjoy living in this uh, creative sphere uh, through drama, creation of various drama skits or uh, plays uh, that they did together. That's a whole other sphere. But I think that that's the answer of your question that Shkoli uh, said that. Race no, no, it's not answering yet because she visited that, but what kind of comments did she make about that? What she liked, what she didn't like, what, uh, uh, how she analyzed that? Because just visiting that, it's not enough. Right, 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 right. Uh, I uh, really can't tell you much about that. Lubica maybe more 
because that's the t time timing is when I left U Yugoslavia and came here, which was very early stages, like two years after Školigrica was uh, made. Uh, but but Sanda came to Ljubica in one of her Ljubica's presentation and uh, clearly supported her work. It was like a completely novelty there. Uh, later on, uh, I don't know her particular comments on there. We had the feeling of support that the same the same uh, the same way of uh, of thinking about uh, how and uh, what to to do with this open open system because uh, our approach was the open system of uh, and the play and cre creative education and uh, drama structures and uh, in um, uh, uh, and my workshop, what, I, what we, we had uh, uh, in Moscow and also was and based you know, on... Artin was in our workshop in Seville. I in Seville. Yes, this was based on uh, Sanders' idea of, uh, of, of, the play, uh, of the play based on Brunner. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, I, I think I will... Uh, uh, the way with this, I, you know, uh, to answer Eugene's question, the way how I see it, there was a very uh, lively cultural uh, pedagogical sphere of discourse. Let's say there was a, kind of like things, the ideas were in the air, if I can say. Yes, that. yes, so a lot yes. of morality there, a lot of personal experiences exchanged the uh, uh, people yes. from each other. But it's very hard to talk about it because it's not uh, in a, in a um, organized form to to tell you like and uh, there is a lot of things that uh, yeah need a lot of background to understand what was going on. So one yeah. thing that I call it I called it in the uh, several presentations that the new sensibility for a child that was um, yeah. in the writings for children in the in the theater for children in the uh, yes. all kinds of, in the uh, literature uh, with Dusko Radovic and uh, various this was... clubs that existed for children of all ages that uh, in which children uh, could just walk in Belgrade is kind of like at that time was uh, very small yeah in a way that uh, from a lot of neighborhoods you could come to the center uh, seven years of age you can you can take a bus and come and and participate in all this cultural offer for children uh, yeah and was engaged the, before she started working at the university in the publishing house for children's books and yeah. the, when she uh uh, kind of supported and invented several, <laughs> invented, made several people who were aspiring to be writers, to become writers for children or poets for children. Uh, it was not only her, but it was kind of like the whole idea of uh, uh, creating culture that's children's culture uh, or for, for the children and sometimes with children. So that in that sense, uh, and what Yubica was talking about, it was the law uh, when she said that it's uh, this pro program, political program of support uh, yeah, for, for everyone. I see Eugene has to go and uh, Artin has to go and uh, we have to go, I guess. We can continue that in some other times. All right, uh, so I guess we are slowly winding up. I hope it was interesting and inspiring. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. I appreciate this. Thank you very much for letting us know and inviting us. And this was wonderful. It was wonderful to hear you all and to see. Uh, I am being called to lunch. That's why I'm uh, having to uh, go. Uh, happy holidays to all Happy of holiday to you. Uh, and I don't know which one you, uh, are you in the Catholic or in the Orthodox side, but in Serbia, they uh, they uh, have all of them, you know. Both I am on the Orthodox side, as you see from <laughs> my virgin, <laughs> but Eriberto is on the Catholic side. So uh -huh. we celebrate Christmas from the 24th yeah. to the 7th of January. <laughs> 
uh, for Brian, uh, there is two weeks delay in the uh, Orthodox uh, church, church calendar. And uh. so Orthodox Christmas is two weeks later and Orthodox New Year's is two weeks later than uh, uh, our New Year. So you start celebrating on the 25th of December, then the New Year, then the 7th of January, then the 14th of January, and you keep celebrating. It's like what we say in Turkish. It's a holiday for the crazy every day. <laughs> uh, and then so uh, wonderful to see you and uh, meet you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Uh, uh, I will put this uh, movie as soon as it develops itself uh, on our um zoom videos and everybody else who wants to see it can come and i think it was an interesting presentation i don't know brian what you think? yeah well just the the bits of it at the end yes they're interesting so i look forward to future conversations about it so